those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. <clears throat> And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will, not, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies is to condemn. It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us, who will separate us from the love of Christ. Will hardship, distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are kept counted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Oh Lord, help us to never forget that nothing can separate us from the love that is for us in Christ Jesus. Help us never to forget that you are with us. So Lord, as we hear your word today, open our hearts and minds to hear what you have to say to us. Perhaps each individually, the Lord may your spirit guide and enliven us to go forward with a passion to share your good news with the world. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Especially this time of year, around September 11th, we are encouraged to remember we are encouraged never to forget. And I don't know about you, where you were on September 1st, 2001. The thoughts that passed through your head. But I do know mine. And I also know that during that time, the trauma of our lives, let us never forget as we experienced that real life moment, it drew us together in unity. It drew us together in God's Spirit. Much different than today, 25 years later, a virus has come upon us. And it seems to have propelled us. And we don't forget what happened to us September 1st. But how many of us have forgotten where God is in the equation? How many of us have forgotten about God in our everyday activities? How many of us have forgotten about God's promise, God's covenant with us? And God's ever enduring love that God gave us as a gift. Let us never forget about God. Hmm. Well, let me begin by sharing. God has never forgotten about us. That is evident through biblical history. Moving from the book of Genesis clear to the book of Revelation. 
If you go back to Genesis chapter 8, verse 1, the scripture makes it a point to tell us that God, even when Noah was in the midst of the great flood, he remembered Noah and all the animals and all the families that was on the boat. And as God remembered them, God sent a wind to blow across the earth, and the floodwaters began to proceed. We move on to Genesis 19, the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, where God destroyed the cities of the valley. God remembered Abraham and Abraham's people. God says that God is going to destroy the cities because of their sinfulness. But in response, the scripture tells us that Abraham had a long conversation with God. And he said, if there are 50 righteous people in the city, are you going to destroy them also? But God heard Abraham's cry. So with that, there might not have been 50 righteous people in the city, but God planned to rescue God's wife. But remember, God rescued Lot and his two daughters. Lot's wife was disobedient when she was called on to look back as leaving the city. She did, and she turned into a pillar of salt. God didn't, remember, didn't, God didn't forget the people of Israel either when they were in slavery in Egypt. Again, God remembered the covenant with Abraham. Granted, the Israelites were treated poorly while they were slaves in Egypt. God didn't forget about them during all that time, even though they were disobedient. He heard them crying in their pain and their misery. And God remembered them. God delivered them from Egypt through the parting of the Red Sea. As time goes on, the Israelites continued to have those moments where they forgot about God. And no matter how much Joseph or Moses and Joshua reminded the people of God, they still forgot of God's goodness. And their hearts became that of stone as they forgot about God's love and mercy towards them. It seems that the only time they would remember God was when they wanted something. Does that sound familiar, my friends? So, in response to the forgetfulness of the Israelites, they were no longer thankful to their God for the many blessings they received. They started to worship idols. They wanted their own way rather than God's way. And lo and behold, it took over 40 years for them to get to the promised land. And still there were moments they forgot God's goodness. Moving on to the New Testament. Remember Jesus hanging on the cross between two thieves who were in the midst of sinfulness. But Jesus without sin. And the one thief recognized the righteousness, the holiness, the sacredness of Jesus. And he said to him, Jesus, remember me. Don't forget me. Remember me when you enter into your kingdom. So I remind us this morning to remember. Let us not give up hope. Let us remember that we have a God who loves us. And as Romans 8.31 says, if God is for us, who is against us? Remember, nothing and no one can judge us, only God. And 
nothing can separate us from the love that God has for us. As Jeremiah writes in Lamentations 3, 22 through 23, it is the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassion, it fails not. They are new every morning. Does that sound familiar? Does that sound like the words from the hymn, Great is thy faithfulness, O God? Oh, as the prophet Isaiah speaks the very words of God coming from Isaiah 40, Verses 28, beginning there. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is an everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not grow vain or grow weary. His understanding it is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and strength is powerless. And even youths will grow faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. I find it ironic that God compares us to eagles, those who trust in Him, those who depend upon Him for survival. I think it's ironic and I think it's both a blessing too that our nation uses the eagle as a symbol. It was first used as an image of a coin back in 19, I'm sorry, back in 1776 in Massachusetts. The eagle, it represents power, strength, leadership, authority. It also represents God's divinity because the eagle can fly higher than any bird. The sky is the limit for the eagle. And while the eagle is the most powerful of birds, the eagle does not take over the smaller birds. The eagle does not consume them. The eagle allows them and empowers them to live. Even Moses himself, he writes, as he speaks to the Israelites, you have seen yourselves what I did to Egypt. And you have seen how I have carried you under eagle's wings and brought you to me. Moses uses God's imagery of an eagle to represent the image of how God brought the Israelites out of Egypt. look through all biblical history. And I want you to remember of all the history books you've read, this is the only one that has endured. This is the only one that we continue to read from over and over again because if we remember, it keeps us from repeating those mistakes, doesn't it? It's okay to fail. It's okay to fall short, but we must remember that so that we don't repeat those mistakes again. This Bible reminds us.
reminds us of the mistakes that we have made throughout human history. And God reminds us, God tells us not to forget how God has delivered us through history and through Jesus Christ. How God has given us strength to endure the hardships. How God has given us ways to fly high in difficult and, and wonderful times. And how God keeps us on task, on focus like an eagle, focusing up on his mercy, his goodness, and grace down through the ages. So never forget. God is always present. Some may say, where was God on 9-11? There was a poem written. I don't know who the author is, but it says, it's a title, Meet Me in a Stairwell. You say you will never forget where you were when you heard the news on September 11, 2001. Neither will I. I was on the 110th floor at a smoke filled room with a man who called his wife to say goodbye. Prayer says, I held his finger steady as he dialed the number. I gave him the peace to say, Honey, I am not going to make it, but I am ready to go. I am okay. As the poem goes on to say, God was with his wife when he called. As she fed breakfast her children, God said, I held her up as I tried to understand his words. And she realized that he was not coming home that night. God was with her. God was in the stairwell of the 23rd floor when a woman cried out to God for help. I've been knocking at your door of the heart for 50 years, God said. Of course I will show you the way home. Only believe in me now. God was there. God was at the base of the building with the priest ministering to the injured to the devastated souls of that day. God was there when he was taken to plant his flock in heaven. The man heard God's voice as God answered. God was on all four of those planes. God was in every seat with every prayer of every person. God was with the crew as they were overtaken. And God was in the very hearts of the believers there, comforting and assuring them that their faith will save them. God was in Texas, God was in Virginia, California, Michigan, Afghanistan. God was standing right next to you on that day when you heard that terrible news. As the poem says, did you sense me? Maybe did you sense God's presence? As the artist writes, I want you to know that God saw every face. God knew every name. And some met God for the very first time on the 86th floor. Some saw God at the last breath. Some couldn't hear God calling to them through the smoke and the flames that they were enduring. Some didn't hear God as God said to them, Come to me, take my hand. And as the poet says, some chose for the final time to ignore God as he called upon their name. For God was there. God knows why, explains the poet. If you were there at that explosive moment in time, would you?
Would you have recognized God's presence? Would you remember that God was there, right there with you? Would you reach for God in that moment? And as the poet writes, God says, I will be with you in a stairwell of your final moments of time. Love God. Here we are again. We may not be in the stairwell. We might be repelled. We might be losing our focus. But God tells us in this moment that I am still here for you. You cry out for me, I am here, and I hear your prayer. I know you by the name. And when you go through the fires, I will be with you. When you go through the waters, I will be with you. God is telling us that. Do you remember? Do you remember? So that God's people will never, ever forget.